family and friends all across the world coming live to you from my war room here in Dallas, Texas. We're going to dive right in this morning on a four-part video series that the Holy Spirit has laid on my heart concerning sanctification. Okay, and we're going to call this series, We Need a Separation. Today we're going to talk about we need a separation in our communication. And I'm going to clarify, we need a separation in the spirit. In separation, what we're going to talk about tonight is in message. In message. In other words, uh, the and tonight we're going to talk about in worship. Hey, family and friends all across the world, coming live to you from my war room here in Dallas, Texas, where we just thank and praise the Lord for sharing life in him and sharing his word with you. Just want to, this is the day, hey, listen, this is the day the Lord has made. We are going to rejoice and we are going to be glad in it. I just, um, sitting here this morning, got my coffee on. It's early in the morning here. The birds are chirping. Uh, life is great. Um, and, um, so we're going to dive right in this morning, uh, on a four part, uh, video series that the Holy Spirit has laid on my heart. Uh, concerning sanctification okay and we're gonna call this series we need a separation because that's what sanctification means in its essence is is what the scripture says when it is what the scripture uh, relates when it says for us to come out from among them and be ye separate all believers know this we are to come out from among them who's the them it's the world systems it is those who are led of the world systems it is those who are influenced by satanic forces and the spiritual uh, uh, rulers of darkness and wickedness that rest in high places, as Ephesians 6 records. We are to come out from among the world systems and be ye separate. So the four-part video series is going to be entitled, We Need a Separation. And we're going to look at four key areas where we as believers need to make this separation. Now, this video primarily um it's for everyone obviously um it keys in on how we should walk as believers because uh, uh the holy spirit's concern is to us but i think we will all i think we will find that that all of us can glean something from the wisdom and knowledge and understanding that's going to be uh uh demonstrated here and also i think that you know uh even if you are not a believer uh it, it, the holy spirit uh may encourage you and inspire you to become a believer and we we talk about that all the time and so uh of how you can be saved uh romans 10 9 and 10 is clear that if you believe the lord jesus christ that god has raised him from the dead you believe that in your heart and you confess that with your mouth you shall be saved subsequently we want to be baptized in the holy ghost is simply just asking the lord we want to be baptized in the holy ghost and uh which is an immersion in his spirit okay so we ask the lord to immerse us in his spirit and um and then the lord jesus as he told nicodemus will be able to see the kingdom of god and also able to enter it and so that's how you can be saved just in case you're unbelieving out there and you were wondering it's uh it's simple it's it's just believing in your heart it's making christ your absolute concern and your highest priority as we discussed uh in a previous video and so um the uh if you want to get ahead here um i would invite you to uh for all of my bible scholars theologians all of those uh if you want to get ahead, um, I would invite you to Acts the first chapter and the eighth verse, Acts 1 and 8. And then uh, today we're also going to throw in there Revelation the 19th chapter and the 10th verse. So we got Acts 1 and 8, Revelation 19 and 10. Okay. And again, we're it's a four-part video series, The Lord has laid them heart. We are going to talk about we need a separation. Okay. So Today, we're going to talk about we need a separation in our communication. And I'm going to clarify that uh, because you can think of that in many different ways. But the Holy Spirit has given me a specific way that we need to think about that. And so the, the thing is, uh, um, he, the concern here is, is that we not look like the world. In other words, that we are not walking in the fleshly desires and 
the carnal nature that we all have uh, being separate, uh, what that suggests is that we're not being led of our carnal nature. We're not being led by it uh, in our decision-making process. We're not being led by it and how we uh, demonstrate our faith to the world. It's as simple as that. Whether you're in the marketplace, whether you're in the church, whether you're in your home, there has to be a distinction. We have to be contradistinctive to those around us who are being led by carnal dictates. There has to be a separation. And when I was growing up in the church, this was preached heavily. It needs to come back. The Holy, that, that is the Holy Spirit's concern uh, as I was seeking the Lord and seeking his heart and seeking what he uh, was concerned about and what he wants to uh, speak to the body of Christ, the body of Christ at large um, concerning. Because see, one of the issues today, and we need to be very careful, is there are many folks that are in the house of the Lord, but they are not necessarily of the spirit of the Lord. They are in his house. They look like real believers. They sound like real believers. They even seem to worship like real believers. Uh, but it is a mimicking process. They are not actually at the core of their heart in, a, in the power of the Holy Spirit. They are what the Apostle Paul told Bishop Timothy. They have a form of godliness, but they have denied the power thereof. What power? The power of the Holy Spirit's presence in them in a way where the Holy Spirit is leading them and guiding them at every measure and every step of their lives. Okay, and so this is what the Hebrew term, when they, uh, when the Hebrews looked at the Lord, they referred to him as Adonai, which means master and Lord. In other words, what we're saying here is believers, everything we say, everything we do, everything we don't say, everything we don't do, all has to be uh, at the authorization of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, and that is where our dilemma in many churches is coming from, because in many churches, we have many people where it simply put, you are in the driver's seat instead of the Holy Spirit. So you are leading your life by your carnal dictates, which in other words, what you think, what you feel, what your experience and the way you think you ought to react or respond or whatever the case may be. But believers, we know that our authorization has to come uh, from Christ. And so we're not living by our carnal dictates, essentially, or inwardly. We are living by the direction and guidance of the Holy Spirit as the Father has given him to us in our spirits to do, okay? And so when the Hebrews looked at that, they called him master and Lord. They called him master and owner. And so in the New Testament sense, we call him Lord, which expresses the same thing, that before I do anything, I seek him first, about brushing my teeth? No, let's not be childish here. About the deep measures and the deep things, the circumstances and situation of my life, we seek the Lord as believers for his direction, for his authorization, for his anointing, there uh, for a myriad of his wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. We seek the Lord first. That's what it means for us to have Christ-like faith. It means that Christ is our highest priority. He is our absolute concern. No one comes before him. No one comes beside him. He's not one amongst many, but he is. he has the preeminence in our lives and in our hearts, and it is all about what he says and what he wants us to do and it wants us to do, and it's not about anyone else, okay? So we are going to dive into this first installment of our series entitled, We Need a Separation. And, and our first area that we're gonna concentrate on is in our communication. I'm going to break that down and I'm going to break that apart because you could easily get the connotation we're talking about preaching and teaching, but that's not where the Holy Spirit wants us to go. We're not talking about that right now. We'll get to that in another uh, uh, part of this series. But for now, we're talking about our general communication in life. We're talking about our communication as faith is our second thing that we're going to, uh, second point that we're going to look at. Our third dilemma that we're going to look at is our communication uh, as it relates to our 
uh, relationship. Okay, that's what our, our relationships, uh, first with the Lord and then with each other. Okay, so we're going to look at general communication. Communication is faith and communication in relationships. And we're going to look at this from the point of view of being separate from what we're seeing in the world. Okay, and by in the world, we mean others who are being led by their carnal desires and the dictates of the, what the King James Version says is their flesh. But it simply means being led by the dictates of your own humanistic nature. Okay, and the problem with that is, is that we have satanic forces that can got that can influence your say your carnal nature. Thus, it is possible for you to think that you're leading your life when in reality, the scripture says you have been taken captive by the devil at his will. And that is an absolute and critical problem because much of the evil that we see in the world, matter of fact, all of the evil that we, let me say it correctly, thank you, Holy Spirit, all of the evil that we see in the world today is a amalgamation, is destructively amalgamation between carnal led individuals, persons, if you will, and satanic uh, demonic spirits. It is an amalgamation of the carnal nature being influenced by satanic forces, has created all the evil that we see in the world today. How do I know this? Two reasons. A, as it relates to the Lord, our Father in heaven, the scripture says he doesn't tempt man with evil, nor can he be tempted with it. So it is impossible that the evil in this world has come from God because he is not the author of it, okay? Which leads me to the point of who the author of evil is, okay? If you read the book of Ezekiel, what you're going to find out is Satan, before he was cast into the earth realm by the Lord, he, his name was Lucifer. His name, Satan, means adversary. Lucifer means son of the morning, okay? He was the brightest and greatest angel, okay, if you will, and I don't want to get too much into angelology there or demonology. What I want to talk about is he was the angel, the highest order of angel. He led the worship in heaven, okay? And Ezekiel tells us that, and he's described uh, as uh, as only what man could match against him, which is precious stones. He's described in such a magnanimous uh, way in the book of Ezekiel. And then what I find critical to note and to understand is this. Then the scripture takes a dark turn and it says, you were perfect in your ways until iniquity was found in you. And so how did evil enter Satan and how did it enter the earth? It entered Satan because he did what we could term as a self-eclipsing of his own light, a self-eclipsing of his own light. In other words, he perverted the light that was in him, thus opaque, making it opaque, and uh, which leads to darkness. Darkness is nothing more than opaque light, okay? And so once he perverted the light within himself by saying, I will ascend to be like the most high, is what the scripture records. Once he said he was going to be like God, and he was going to sit as God, and he wanted to be God, that light in him became opaque darkness. He perverted it through his desire to be God instead of serving God, okay? Now, how does it enter the earth realm? We read in the book of Genesis that he gets Eve to do the same thing. She eclipses the light in herself and what he, and what he does and, uh, and what, how he does this with her, how he accomplishes this with her is he gets her to pervert the light within herself by perverting the word of God, okay? God gave Satan a place. God gave Lucifer a place. Okay. God gave him bounds. God gave him, he made him who he is. He's the creator. Satan is the creation. And by the way, Satan is not God. He is not a God. Okay. He is a created being. He is on a higher order than human beings, but he is created by God. He is not omniscient. He is not omnipresent. And he is not omnipotent. He is not all-knowing. He is not all-present. And he is not all-powerful. He does have limits. And I praise the Lord for that. That's why the scripture says when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord lifts up a standard against him. I praise the Lord for that. Okay, so he gets 
evil to enter the earth realm through perverting the word with Eve. He says, did the Lord say the, uh, that in the day you eat of this tree, you're still alive? No, no, no. What he knows, and I'm paraphrasing, Satan tells her what he knows the day you eat of that tree, you're going to be like him, knowing both good and evil. Oh, I could get into something right there, uh, especially when I'm teaching Sunday school, but we're, we're going to sidestep that because we have more important, we have uh, 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 specific matters, not more important, but specific matters that we want to tend to uh, 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 this morning. Okay, so, um, so the bottom line is, so evil enters uh, uh, the angelic realm through Satan perverting Okay, the light, uh, 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 and, and in other words, self-eclipsing the light within himself or perverting the light, creating opaque darkness within himself. Then the scripture says he uh, leads two-thirds of the angels in this same foolishness, okay? Then he comes down to earth, the scripture says, having great wrath, and then he accomplishes this, the same thing with man, okay, and getting man to self-eclipse the light within ourselves by perverting the word of God. Okay, and so this is how evil has entered the earth realm. Has it come by the hand of the Lord? It has come by the hand of humanistic, carnal nature and satanic demonic forces. That deathly amalgamation, I call it. That deathly amalgamation, that deathly cross pollination is how evil has come into the earth. So I am so sick and tired of blaming people blaming all of the evil in the earth on the Lord. Let me say this, let me stop you and silence you. That stuff did not come by the hand of the Lord. Why? Because the Lord says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. The scripture says, as a man thinketh, so is he. If God is thinking thoughts of peace to give us an expected end, then that's exactly what's gonna happen, okay? You can bank your life on that. That's exactly what's gonna happen. But we have to receive that by faith. In other words, we have to make that our absolute concern and our highest priority. All right, let's dive into this a little deeper here. Uh, I, 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 I uh, shared with you earlier to go to Acts 1 and 8 and Revelation 19 and 10. I'm going to read those really quickly, and then we're going to get off in our three areas of general communication. Uh, in other words, being separate in our general communication, being separate in our communication as faith, and being separate in our communication as relationship. Okay, so now, Acts 1 and 8 records but ye shall receive power, this is Jesus talking to the apostles, okay? But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Ye shall be witnesses unto me. Put a pin on that right there. Because that would establish, that's what establishes our separating uh, force from the world. You should be witnesses unto me. He doesn't say witnesses unto, uh, uh, you know, Elijah Muhammad, witnesses unto uh, uh, Harry Krishna and and uh, the prophet Muhammad and you and me and, you know, we're not going to be witnesses unto the president of the United States and the president and king of this nation and that nation. We're not going to be uh, witnesses unto satanic forces. We're not going to be witnesses unto our favorite job, our favorite team, our favorite local business, our favorite corporation. He said, you're going to be witnesses unto me. That establishes the separating principle that we want to cast forth in this four-part series on we need a separation okay now it goes on to say we've established our separating principle there in acts 1 and 8 it goes on to say both in jerusalem and in all judea and in samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth what i love about that is no matter where we go where we find ourselves who we're keeping company with we have got to remain sanctified or separated we have got to remain separated it starts in our spirit first and then it comes into our accident existential ambit of influence or sphere of influence okay now revelation 19 and 10 and we're going to find something very interesting here if you've never read this before fasten your seatbelt because this is going to blow your socks off Okay, I've taught this many times, and when I normally teach this, you can hear a pin drop in the room. Okay, as uh, one, of, one of my old elders in the church, uh, when I was uh, 27 years ago, he said, you could hear a rat lick a flower. I like that. <laughs> you could hear a rat lick a flower, he said. Okay, so Revelation 19 and 10, fasten your seatbelt. It records, and I fell at his feet. This is the Apostle John talking about how he fell at this angel who appeared to him's feet. Okay, he said, I, I fell at his feet to worship him. 
But listen to what the angel says to the apostle John. He said, and he said unto me, see thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant, okay, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Again, there's that separating principle. It's not the testimony of past presidents, of former NBA commissioners or sports commissioners. It's not uh, Roger Goodell. It's not, you know, all these different, I'm not picking on anybody, so don't write me and don't email me about none of that foolishness. Uh, that's child's play. I'm not picking on anybody. What I'm, what I'm establishing here is there's exclusivity in Christ, okay? He's not talking about any other God of any other religion religion. He's not talking about any other ideology. He's not talking about any, this is an exclusivity to Jesus Christ as the son of God. What does the, what does the angel tell John? He says, worship God for the testimony of Jesus, not anybody else, is the spirit a prophecy? Is the spirit a prophecy? In other words, is the spirit of communication Okay, we've established our separating principle because he says, uh, see that thou do it not. He says, I am of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. That's the separating principle because he's not talking about his testimony is not about anybody else. Okay, and I need to let every unbeliever out there know this one thing. You need to understand this. When you're talking about the Christian faith, you're talking about the body of Christ, what you are have to understand is there is an exclusiveness to this. Every ideology can't doesn't come into this, it doesn't work into this, and it's not accepted by the Lord into this. Let me share this one defining principle about uh, being a believer in Christ. Many of you out there, Okay, and, and I'm talking in the church now. Many of you think that it is a, it, it, that you, you, in your spirit, you are saying, I'm going to do this for the Lord. I'm going to do that. And I'm going to, you know, sing this and, and, and shout that. And I'm going to preach this and I'm going to pray that. And I'm going to do all these things. Listen, let me tell you what the principle is. That is not the dilemma here. The dilemma is this. It's not about what you're going to bring to the Lord. Hear me clearly and hear me deep. Get this revelation deep down in your spirit and let's get it today. It is not only about, it is not about what we're going to bring to the Lord. Let me tell you what the absolute critical thing that we need to understand is. It is about what he's going to accept from you. And let me say this, he is not going to accept everything that we bring to him. So let's get that revelation deep in our spirits, because I am looking at a lot of strange fire in worship. I'm looking at a lot of strange word and the apostle Paul and, and, the, and the apostles were clear. If anyone preaches any other word than this charismatic gospel that the apostles preach and that Christ communicated to them through the power of his spirit, he says, let that man be cursed until Christ's second coming. Let them be cursed. So we can't just deliver to the Lord whatever we think we want to give to him. You can't do it. Okay? And listen, we're going to dive into worship in a very, in, uh, being separate in worship. We're going to dive into that in, in this four-part series. We are really going to get into see, some things here. So I want you to really just fasten your seatbelt. And I mean the kind of seatbelt where it has straps over your chest so you can stay glued in here. You can stay secured in here and fasten in this power and demonstration of the Holy Ghost. Because here's the issue. The Lord, listen, judgment begins at the house of the Lord first, okay? And if it does, the scripture says, where shall the sinner and the ungodly appear? The Lord is going to always try us by fire to purify us. We have got to go through a purification process in the church because there we, we are starting to look too much like the worldly standard, okay? We are starting to sound too much like the worldly standard. We are stuck. Listen, you know, Martin Luther wrote 95 theses, digressing for a moment and still on task, though. Uh, Martin Luther, the great uh, Protestant reformer, he wrote uh, a thesis and nailed a 95 thesis he wrote. He nailed it to the door of Wittenberg, Germany in his time and in his generation. Do you know what the 95, 95 percent of that 95 thesis, some scholars would argue more, was about what's called the sale of indulgences? You know what that is? And he was looking at his arch enemy, John Tetzel, was the gentleman who was going around amongst the uh, 
amongst the uh, people at that time. Uh, and his famous slogan was, when your coin clinks in the uh, chess, uh, the heaven will, the souls of your loved ones will rise out of purgatory. See, that's what he's saying. When your soul, when your coin clinks in the chest, the souls of your loved ones will rise out of purgatory. So it was the sale of indulgences by the Catholic Church. Okay, I'm not picking on the Catholic Church. Just, just uh, stating some facts and some history. And 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 so he wrote a thesis, and and 95% of that thesis is about the sale of indulgences. Now, why am I bringing this point forward? Because the Protestant reformer Martin Luther believed that there ought to be a separation between us and the world. They already had thieves with usury and taxes and all this foolishness. There ought to be a separation even when we're in business. Okay, even when we're handling money, even when we're handling uh, our neighbors and our children and our spouse, there ought to be a difference. There ought to be a contradistinctive separation, a contradistinctive look between us and the world. Okay, we are supposed to be antithetical to the world. We are supposed to live an example that pricks their hearts. We are supposed to speak in a way that convicts them and pricks their heart. That's what the Holy Spirit has come to do. Jesus said this, I didn't come to send peace on the earth, but a sword. I am so tired of folks with this tiptoe into the tulips, Jesus. Go back and read the words of Jesus because he is not this airy, flippity slippers on with a comfy robe Jesus that many folks are preaching for. From the pulpits of our churches the world over he said listen i didn't come to send peace but a sword so that a father will be against the son the son against the father mother against the daughter he said the man's enemies will be they of his own household he said if you have mother father sister brother anybody before me you're not worthy of me take up your cross he says and follow me it is a cross to be separate please i feel like preaching right now but i'm gonna sit the preacher now it is a cross to be separate all right now we are going to die so we've established our principle of separation okay and uh and so now the first thing we're going to get into is general communication again we're not talking about preaching and teaching here we're going to tackle that uh, in another uh part of this series we are talking about general communication throughout the day as believers general communication now, let's not get in a child's play. I'm not, the Holy Spirit is not going to have me waste your time talking about not using foul language. We already know the scripture says, let no corrupt communication of any kind come out your mouth. That's, in other words, that's evil speaking. And yes, that, co that rubric covers profanity. That's child's play. That's not what the Holy Spirit wants me to sit up here and, and, and use your valuable time to talk about. Okay, your time is valuable, my time is valuable, and I did not come on here today to waste anybody's time. Okay, we are going to talk about the deep things of the word of the Lord. This is the meat of the word of the Lord. If you're on milk, I might not be your teacher today. But if you're on the meat of the word, I am absolutely your teacher and your professor for this session. Okay, and I want to share with you this. Our general communication has to be rooted in the spirit of God. What do I mean by that? We are looking at situations and circumstances in our life, and one of them is the political uh, 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 leadership in our country. Another one is the COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemic situation that we're going through. Another one is your own personal situations and circumstances that all of us find ourselves going through in our lives. And where our communication needs to be separate, we cannot be sitting up there with a bitter spirit and a foul attitude and a negative language coming out our mouths about we cannot be sitting up here cursing the president of the united states he is the our leader of our country and whether you voted for him or not it does not do behoove any of us or do any of us good to sit up there and run the man in the ground it doesn't matter what I think about him, and I'm going to tell you why. Because the scripture says the heart of the king, that's the president of the United States and every other king of every other nation, is in the hand of the Lord. So believers, why are we, we do not want to sit up here and follow the world's pattern of blasting the president and blasting the Republican Party and blasting the Democrat. We don't want to sit up here and blast the preachers. We don't want to sit up here and blast our neighbors and blast our spouses and blast our kids. We cannot, we have got to be separated in how we communicate about general things. 
Okay, you can't, your coworker comes to you. You cannot be sitting up there talking about dog. Listen, you know what? I'm with you. These folks, are, you know, they just crazy here at this job. And, you know, and my boss, he just get on my nerves and, you know, and, and, and just blowing a gasket. We cannot afford to do that because we are supposed to be the representation of the Lord Jesus Christ in the earth realm. Let's get that deep in our spirit today. We are supposed to be the representation of the Lord Jesus Christ in the earth realm. The apostle Paul writes it this way. We are to be ambassadors of the Lord Jesus Christ. What does an ambassador do? He, he procures a message, okay? it's He is not the author of it. He procures it from the author, and then he takes it to those whom the author or the king, in this case, our father in heaven, is has procured the message. We are supposed to take that message and give it to those that are outside the kingdom, i.e unbelievers sinners and the ungodly and invite them to come in to the kingdom all right listen all oh, that's good stuff right there listen so our general communication has got to be demonstrated from the radix latin word meaning root from the radix of the holy spirits indwelling in us and what I love about that is he gives me the power to speak correctly. He gives me the power to speak wholesome words and words of life. We are supposed to, our general communication should be marked by spiritual life. I'm going to pause there for a second so I can see deep in our spirit. Our communication should be rooted in spiritual life, and in particular, spiritual life found only in the Lord Jesus Christ. And might I add this as the Son of God? Because I know I got some religious folks out there in other religions and denominations, all this, uh, all these various factions. I want you to understand I'm talking about faith in Christ as the Son of God. Not a great prophet, not a great teacher, all that, you know, stuff. I'm talking about him as the Son of God. That absolutely matters because the scripture says Jesus is the stumbling block to the nations. They're not stumbling over the prophet Muhammad. They're not stumbling over uh, Harry Krishna. They're not stumbling over Scientology and 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 uh, Wiccanism and Guyanism and black magic and voodoo. They're not stumbling over any other character and any other historical character that has ever come on the face of the earth. They're not stumbling over satanic forces. Most people don't even believe they exist, and they are absolutely real, and they're absolutely causing chaos and confusion, along with the humanistic measures of the carnal nature that we referred to earlier. Okay, they're absolutely causing a problem. Okay, and so this is what we have to get deep in our spirit. Our general communication has got to be sanctified. It has got to be set apart. It has got to come from a spirit that understands who its Lord is. And that's what we have to do as believers. You got to know who your Lord is. You have to know who is in control. I don't need to blast the president and blast this political party and blast my neighbor and they didn't cut their grass right and look at that dress they wife got and they looking great, kids looking great. I don't need to do all that because listen, I know who's in control. The Lord is in control. Ain't nobody else in control here because no one else created anything. And if you want to argue that point, you don't have the power to overtake the Lord. And I'll make a more interesting point. You can certainly, you might have the power to overtake me, but you don't have the, and no one possesses the power of angelic type or human type or any other species to overtake the power of the Lord, okay, or his word. So here is the issue. The scripture says the grass wither the flower fades, but the word of the Lord is going to stand forever. It shall go forth and accomplish the thing wherein the Lord sent it. The scripture says it would not return to him void. OK, so we don't have power in any form over God. So it would behoove us to pay attention to his word and apodictically obey it. In other words, it's expressed in command. We need to obey the commands of the Lord. OK, and that's another thing. It is time out from communication in the church about God is asking you to do something. The father is not asking you to do anything. It's a commandment. He is commanding you to live holy. Uh, uh, how do you mean, Bishop? I'm going, I'm going to say exactly what the word says. It says, follow peace with all men and what? 
holiness, if you know your Bible, without which no man shall see the Lord. You're not going to see him. You're not going to experience. You're not going to be in his kingdom. None of that stuff. If you don't follow holiness, you have got, we have got to be separated. I can't stress it enough. So we got to be separate in our general communication. We have to speak wholesome words of life. We have to be, especially in this time, especially the darker it gets in the world's uh, uh, atmosphere, we have got to be the light and the salt, Jesus said, of the earth. We have got to come from under these bushels. We got to go in the highways and the byways. And when we get there, we have to have an uplifting word, a word of encouragement, a word of life and a word of light, L-I-G-H-T. Why? Because the Lord says, I am the true, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man comes to the Father but my me. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. So we have to have a word of life and light. Okay, let that drop deep in our spirits here. I told you to fasten your seatbelt. We're only one third of the way through. Okay, the second thing we want to talk about as being separate in our communication is in our faith. And I'm going to point out something here because this is one of my pet peeves when it comes to folks trying to convince me you're saved. You know, I'm a pastor. I'm a bishop professor. I go all over the place, been all over the country, outside the country. I've entertained conversations with people from every nation all over the world, uh, uh, even places I, I never even heard of. They had to explain to me where these places were. You know, uh, And so, you know, and, and all of that, listen, uh, we have got to have a separation in our communication as it relates to faith, okay? And and this is a pet peeve of mine, as I was sharing with you two seconds ago. A pet peeve of mine is, listen, believers, your speech can betray you, okay? Folks, I love the Lord, and, you know, I'm worshiping God in spirit and in truth, and I love the Lord. I'm not mocking anybody right now or picking on anybody. What I'm picking on is the actions that we're taking that we need to clean up, allow the Holy Spirit to clean up and purify us. We need to judge ourselves, the scripture says, that we not be judged with the world, okay? It's clear. So we, uh, judging meaning we have to use spiritual discernment to clean, to, uh, to allow the Holy Spirit to work in the areas of our life that need to be cleaned up. Okay, stuff that needs to be getting like you. We clean out our attics. We clean. We do spring cleaning. Let's clean out the attics of our spirit and do some spring spring cleaning in our spirits. Okay, before the summer gets here. All right. So here's the issue. We have got to be uh, separate in our communication as it relates to our faith. Okay. And one of my pet peeves uh, and is that our speech betrays us because here we are and you say i love the lord i'm worshiping in spirit and in truth and yet i don't ever i can hold converse hours of conversation with people and I, they never talk about the lord if you ask them what they think on any given decision you have to make they give you their opinion not what the word of the lord says Okay, especially, that is especially detrimental when somebody is sick and needs healing. Scripture says, let them call for the elders of the church, praying the prayer of faith, and that prayer of faith will save the sick. That prayer of absolute concern and highest priority will save the sick. Why? Because the Lord will give the deliverance through healing. Okay, uh, excuse me, it doesn't say anything about us sitting up there and giving our opinion on your healing. See, and preachers, teachers, those that communicate the word, this is what we're going to have to get in our spirits, okay? It doesn't say anything about your opinion, okay? Our opinion is irrelevant in this. The only opinion that matters is the one that is communicated to us through the word of God. So when I do give you my opinion, it better be laced with the word of God. It better be what the Lord is saying and not what I'm saying. Okay, you know why? Because I'm fallible, because I can get it wrong, because I'm imperfect, because I'm fragmented in my thinking at times, especially when I have traumatic disruptions in my life, which we all experience. So it's like the blind leading the blind. If they fall in the ditch, Jesus said, who is going to deliver them out of the ditch? Okay, and so if I'm going through some stuff and you trying to ask me what to do about your situation, I need to give you what the Lord is saying because he's perfect. He is infallible. His word never fails. And when he decides to deliver and bless, it is, that word is going to go forth and deliver you in your life. And no power in heaven or earth and no demon in hell is going to be able to uh, be able to stop it. I feel like shouting right now, but I'm going to calm it on down so I can keep teaching. Listen. We have got to have our, we have got to correct our communication as it relates to faith. We have got to be separate in our communication as it relates to our faith. 
We have got to talk up the Lord Jesus, as they say. We have, When we're in decision-making processes about our lives, or we're trying to encourage others in their lives, the Lord, our counsel has to come from the word of the Lord, the mind of the Lord, and the spirit of the Lord. You say, preacher, can we have the mind of Christ? Yes, we can. The scripture says several things. We discern spiritual, that we compare spiritual things with spiritual. We have the mind of Christ. Okay, and 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 we have spiritual discernment, the scripture says. So we are without excuse because once the spirit of God indwells you, you have access to all this magnanimous and mighty power. There is no more excuses. It is time out for excuses. My brothers and my sisters in the body of Christ, no more excuses. Now, if you're a church person, if you're backslidden, if you're religious, come out of that place, come into the body of Christ by believing in Christ and being baptized in the Holy Ghost so you can have access to all this richness that I'm sharing with you today. Our communication as it relates to our faith has got to change. I go whole conversations with people. They never even mention the Lord. And then we get to church on Sunday and I see you and you, you know, and even in church, people are still not talking about the Lord. They talking about what happened last week and what happened over here. And this one's business. That one did. The church is not a social club. It is not a den of thieves. It is a house of prayer. We should be, you know, why our communication about our faith, especially in the house of the Lord, has got to be rooted in the Lord. I'll give you one magnanimous and probably the greatest reason why, I'm sure. Jesus said, where two or three are gathered together in my name. What does that mean in real time? When we gather in his name, how do we gather in his name? We gather and we talk about him. When you talk, you know, the phrase when we say uh, our colloquials, you talk somebody up, we got to talk Jesus up. And he says, when you talk me up, there am I in the midst of you. That is why, and if we are talking about anything else, when we come into the house of the Lord, listen, we work six days, seven days, we are to rest, and we are to talk up the Lord. But I'm suggesting your, your communication of faith has to be that way every day. It's amazing to me. I've gone in people's houses and some of the capacities I've worked in and they got all kind of Bibles. They got all kind of, you know, uh, uh, crosses laying around, all this stuff. They let me walk right out their house and didn't say two words to me about Jesus. Didn't even care about my eternal soul enough with your saved self. Yes, I said it. It's inflammatory. You can beat me up later. With your saved self, let me walk out your house. Wasn't even concerned enough about my eternal soul to ask me, did I know the Lord Jesus Christ? with your saved self, okay? And that is a problem, not only in my estimation, my estimation is the Lord's estimation. The Holy Spirit is the one who had a conversation with me and I was first partake of this word I'm giving to you. So don't think I'm picking on you. And if you think I'm picking on you, then he was picking on me and I know he wasn't picking on me. So I know I ain't picking on you. He's relaying it to me, I'm relaying it to you. That's what the angel said. I, he says uh, uh, in, in Revelation 19 and 10, right at that last clause, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. You know what the testimony of Jesus is? I'm going to tell you what the testimony of Jesus is. The testimony of Jesus, he says, is the spirit of prophecy. You know what that spirit of prophecy is? We got to talk up Christ. And we have to talk him up as the Holy Spirit gives it, not as we see it in our own interpretation and in our own opinion. Okay? So... Here's the reality, and here's the issue, okay? Uh, I got, <laughs> it's so interesting, I got folks, uh, you know, chiming in here, trying to, anyway. So, now, we have got to talk up the Lord Jesus in our churches, and let me say this, believers, we have got to talk him up in our lives. All of you that got questions out there, I'm going to get to you, hold tight. We, uh, uh, I'm a, actually, I'm gonna get to you, uh, uh, separately and personally. So, so, so we, so I could give you the, the, the deep things. Okay. Now listen, so we have got to have our communication of faith. We have got to talk the Lord up in our decision-making process. And let, let me say this, we have got to talk the Lord up when it comes to our children. We have got to talk the Lord up when it comes to our, listen, you might have an opportunity to talk. I've had opportunity to talk to leaders that were, that were, that were drawn up political bills and laws and, 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 and in various capacities and business capacities and boardrooms. And I want to use that opportunity. Listen, I always say this to everybody. I want to use that opportunity to tell them about Jesus and influence them to the kingdom. I'm not talking about running anybody over and shoving it down their throat and Bible beating nobody. That ain't, that is not going to accomplish anything. What I'm talking about is just influence. They, if they ask you, 
you what you think, go on and tell them. They ask me, hey, say, hey, hey, Bishop, what you think about something? Listen, you know what? I, I, I tell them, I do it by the word of the Lord, and the word of the Lord says this, and this is what I will counsel you if you ask me. I'm going to counsel you from the word of the Lord, okay? They already know who I am. My friends, I got all kind of friends about, from all kind of walks, from all ethnicities. All my friends, you cannot be my friend. You cannot be my family. All my family members know where I stand. You are not going to come in my purview for any lengthy amount of time, and we're not going to have a conversation about Christ. I'm not going to influence you about Christ. We have got to change the way we commute. We have got to be separate in our communication of our faith. Okay, because too many people keep them fa their faith to themselves. But Romans 10, 9, and 10 is clear. We have to confess the Lord Jesus Christ. That means out your mouth, out of, out of a spirit that has made him your highest priority and your absolute concern, got to come out your mouth to uh, your ambit of influence or your sphere of influence wherever you find yourself. We have got to begin to communicate our faith because like unlike other faiths, our faith has supreme power. In other words, and I say it all the time, and I preached it from the pulpits of America and abroad, listen, what we have believers, the world needs. And we have to be convinced of that. We have to know it deep down in our spirit. I'm so tired of folks making excuses. Well, you know, Bishop, I'm going to get to it. No, 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 no. You're not going to get to it. Do it. Okay, I'm going to tell you, just like Nike said, just do it. It is time to do it. We are praying about stuff that the Lord's already given us a word about. It is time to do what we know to do. You say, give me a good reason, preacher. I'll give you one right from the word of God. Everything I say comes from the word of God. Listen, I'm going to give you an absolute great reason why you need to do it. Because the scripture says, to him that knows to do and does not, to him it is sin. So unless you plan on being living a lifestyle of sin, Okay, I suggest all of us begin to do what the Holy Spirit is giving us to do and stop making all these excuses. Because once you know, you got all the tools, all the power. It is time to do the building. It is time to do the reaping. It is time to do the gathering. Last and final thing that we're going to tackle here is communication from a relationship point of view. First of all, vertical with our Father in heaven. Second of all, amongst each other. Now, one of the premises I want to lay here, and we're getting ready to wrap this up uh, because we got three more to go today. Listen, is this, okay? We have got to be separate in our communication as it relates to relationship, okay? As relationship, because here's the issue. We have to start with our Father in heaven. I find it interesting that folks say they love the Lord, but won't even call him Lord. We got God, 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 everything has got God in it, okay? But what I love about the apostles, when they open their epistles, Paul, a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ, and God the Father in heaven. All throughout Scripture, Peter, Paul, Peter, the servant of the Lord Jesus Christ, and from God the Father, they greet you in the name of the Father. In the Old Testament, he was Lord God, okay? In the New Testament, he is Father God, okay? Jesus Christ is our Lord and our Savior, and yet we don't use the term Lord, and our speech betrays us. Lord means he gets, he authorizes what we say, what we don't say, where we go, what we don't go, touched on this earlier. He is the author, which means he is the one who casts forth the authorization for what we do in our lives as believers. In other words, I'll say it this way, and this is close to my heart. I told the Lord personally, my life will rise and fall at your hand. Okay, I'm not going to let it rise and fall at the hands of mankind. It is going to rise and fall at the Lord's hand. If he doesn't say it, I ain't saying it. If he doesn't do it, I'm not doing it. If this is my goal, if he doesn't tell me to go there, I'm not going. If he tells me to go there, I'm going. Listen, if he don't want it, if he doesn't want it for me, then I don't want it. If he doesn't want them in my life, then I don't want you in my life. If he doesn't want me to be, uh, to have this, guess what? Or that. It's gone. If he wants me to have it and he wants it there, come on and welcome it in, even if it puts me on the hot seat of uncomfortability. And this word may be uncomfortable, but I wanted this word because I want to walk in sanctification and holiness. I want to be separate from the world. Any believer worth their spirit in Christ is going to understand that you want to come out from among them and be ye separate. And so our communication as it relates to our relationships has got to be separate. Okay, it has got to be separate. 
we cannot sit up there. We cannot afford to engage in our relationships and from a relational point of view and have all kind of disrespect for the father. This kind of, it's, it's not blatant, it's inconspicuous, but it's there. I, you know, I, I, we don't have enough believers addressing Christ as Lord. We don't have enough believers addressing Christ as God the Father. Even when you listen to our worship music, you, it's, it's not Father and Lord. I'm not saying all. Don't write me no letters, emails. I'm not saying everything. I am not. I am saying in general there is a problem in the life of the church with this issue of communicating Christ in our relationships. Listen, we have to communicate Christ in our sexual relationships. Marriage is honorable in all in the bed undefiled. There is no way that we should be shacking. There is no, the old saints used to call it shacking. Let me explain that for those of you who may not understand what that means. You cannot be living with somebody and you're not married to them and having sex with them. Let me just say it. If, if it's too much for your kids, then make sure you you, you know, you, you, you you go in your room with it or whatever you got to do, because I'm not putting any parental advisory on this word. It's coming straight with no chaser, okay? We have got to express Christ in our sexual relationship. We have got to express, express Christ in our mental, our psychological relationships, our emotional, our spiritual relationships. Everything about us, every dimension of who our very being and who we are, Christ has to be expressed in it, okay? When we're dealing with each other, especially when we're dealing with unbelievers, they need to see when we're baptized in the Holy Ghost, one thing that occurs is our we dynamically and radically change in the essence of our spirit. So our desires change. That's what bringing the past the word of the Lord in Romans 12, 1 and 2, when it says, be not conformed to this world, be, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. See? And so we, our desires begin to change. Transforming of your mind, mind, spirit, heart, all the same, all interchangeable words for the to describe the same thing, which are your psychological processes, will, which your will, which is our will, which is the seat of our desire, and your decision-making processes. Okay? Heart, spirit, mind, all interchangeable all meaning all coming from the same three uh, dimensions within the human spirit. So let's understand this. We have got to communicate in our relationships from the advantage point of Christ being in our spirit. Okay, we cannot continue to sit up here and you know and 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 make our relationships void of Christ. How we deal in business must show Christ. How we deal with the uh, with our spouses must show Christ. How we deal with our children. Scripture says, provoke, fathers, don't provoke your children to anger. It tells us to love our wives as Jesus loved the church. It tells wives uh, to, and listen, it goes both ways. We are to submit and love. They are su to submit and love. So this thing about one doing the other, uh, no, no, no. We're both called to submit and love as Christ loves the church. OK, and so this is what we have to understand. All right. We have to communicate in our vertical relationship with the father and in our horizontal relationships. We have got to get our communication about him right first so that we can get it right as we cast it forth to the. And let me say this, especially to unbelievers, especially to the unbelieving world. If everything we talk about sounds exactly like what they talk about, if they're talking about the club, going to the club, and we talking about going to the club, if they talking about secular music, and we talking about the same, uh, girl, you, dude, you heard Nicki Minaj, bruh, you heard, uh, you know, this one and that. Listen, it. how is there going to be a contradistinction then? Why would they, how are they going to understand that they need to come out of the world into the body of Christ if we are talking about the same things that they're talking about? And my, listen, please don't write me and email me about no child's play, okay? Oh, you, uh, Bishop, are you saying we can't do that? We can do that a little, listen to me. You know, as a believer, what you're supposed to be doing and not. So we're not going into morality and ethics clauses here or spirituality. What we're talking about is how we allow the Holy Spirit to lead us in our relationships. We have got to start stop using human measures to begin to tackle the issues that we're dealing with because we can clearly see many of us in our lives all the times that these measures have failed us. And so we got to do away with that. We got to get into the depth of this word and get in Christ. And we've got to make sure our communication as it relates to the general measures is in Christ. We got to make sure that our communication as it relates to the measures of faith are in Christ. We got to make sure our communication as it relates 
to our relationships and those measures are in Christ. And when we do that, there will be a antithetical, contradistinctive uh, nature about us that allows unbelievers, the sinners and the ungodly and the backsliders to see that they need to come into the kingdom. Why? Because we're ambassadors and we are symbols of the Lord Jesus Christ. What is a symbol? It is a messenger that not only points, but participate. That's the difference between signs and symbol. A si both are messengers that point. But the difference between a sign and a symbol is that the sign does not participate, but the symbol does. Okay, that's why Jesus could say, take up your cross and follow me. This is all part of taking up our cross. All right, so we're going to stop right there. Uh, five course meal. I pray that everyone got something out of that, no matter which uh, situation you find or, or, or spiritual level of maturity you find yourself at. I pray that the Holy Spirit has spoke to your heart. I pray that he has pricked some of our hearts to do what the Lord has called us to do. And I mean, do it with a spiritual burning and passion and fervor. All right. Everybody out there all across the world, all my family, my friends, enemies of the cross, I love you. And listen, I want you to know that you're loved by the Lord. I want to invite you into this kingdom. And until next time, I want all of you to be blessed. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And listen, please understand the Lord loves you. And I do too. All right. Good morning for now. Hey, family and friends across the world. If you've enjoyed the message that you've heard, we would invite you to hit both your like and your subscribe buttons. If you would like to connect with us here at the ministry, bishopgacox.org. Again, that's bishopgacox.org. You can connect with us through Facebook, Instagram, and a variety of other ways there. For those of you that would like to partner with us in giving, you can do so uh, through Cash App at bishop1223, bishop1223. For those of you that have already donated, we thank the Lord for your continued support as we endeavor to take the gospel throughout the world. Until next time, it is critical for you to know and to understand that the Lord loves you and we do too.